What's up, YouTube? Thanks for joining me on the channel today because we're going to compare eight of my helmets from Rurock to Simpson, Biltwell, HAC, DMD. And in the end of this video, I'll tell you which one of these helmets that I regret buying and which one that I would rock with on a day-to-day -day basis, the one that I just couldn't live without. Before I get started, I just want to make a few points to level the playing field. The first one being, these are just my subjective opinions, so take it with a grain of salt. What I care about might look very different than what somebody else cares about. Two, while I've had experience with, you know, a lot of different brands, I still have yet to try out certain brands like Arai and Shoei. So keep that in mind. While I'm not at the level of Revzilla when it comes to helmets, I have tried a decent variety of helmets ranging from Scorpion, Bell, Icon, AGV. Those particular brands won't be in this video just because I don't have those helmets anymore. But those are the brands that I have tried along with the helmets in this video. All right. So with all that out of the way, let's get started. All right. So first one up on the list is my Biltwell Lane Splitter. Now, I like the lane splitter so much that I actually bought two of them. This black lane splitter is my main mode of vlogging helmet and this rusty butcher lane splitter is my most recent acquisition. What I really like about the lane splitter is just the overall styling of the helmet. Other than the aggressive styling, my other favorite feature of this helmet I have to say is the price. At $249, I believe that it fits a wide range of budgets and honestly more likely than not, you can find amazing deals on these helmets. Now with the price being where it is on the lane splitter, there aren't a whole lot of features available on this helmet. It's sort of like what you see is what you get with this helmet. You have open air vents in the front of the helmet Helmet and you get just tons of airflow, which might be a good thing in the summer, but might not be the best thing in the winter riding season. Out of all the helmets that I own, the visor on the built wall, unfortunately, I have to say is probably the lowest quality compared to some of the other brands that I have. I've actually had issues with the visor peeling or, or kind of cracking, but I will say that the built wall customer service is just top notch in terms of making sure that you're taken care of. So for the example that I gave you about the, the visor, they were able to send me a replacement right away. I really like the fact that, you know, they stand behind the products. I will say that the Biltwell customer service really does go a long way in terms of just feeling confident about your purchase. So overall, I'll say that the Biltwell lane splitter is like the best value that I have in terms of what you get for the amount of money that you spend on the helmet. Next up on my list is the Simpson Outlaw Bandit. This helmet comes in at a price of $449, but I would say for that price, it is the safest helmet that I own. It's DOT, ECE, and also Snell approved. This is the safest rated helmet that I own currently in my collection. Similar to the Biltwell Lane Splitter, I would say the Simpson Outlaw Bandit just doesn't have a whole lot of features, but let's go over some of the features right now. It does, it does have this unique design with the ridges on the forehead of the helmet, and Simpson claims it's to prevent buffeting at high speeds. To me, I couldn't tell a huge difference, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I do think it helps just a tiny bit. Every little bit counts. It also has great airflow with these vents near the face of the helmet, but you can't close the vents. Unlike the lane splitter though, I would say the Simpson Outlaw Bandit comes with a very, very high quality visor. Now, you might think I'm a little weird for talking about the visor as like a feature, but you know, just check out the, the thickness of the visor on this. Don't mind the dirtiness. It's just super high quality, probably doesn't come through in the video, but you know, when you open it and close it, there's just a confident snap to it that I really, really like. The reason why I mentioned this is because if you're like me, I like to open and close my visor while I'm riding just to get some airflow and then close it when I don't. So having like that confident just snap into place, it does feel like it adds to the premium quality of this helmet. Yeah, and the overall result is just a solid feel when you're wearing the helmet, just an overall premium experience. I would say if I want to go with the safest helmet that I own, this is it. This is what I'm grabbing. Okay, so next up on my list is the Rurock Atlas 1.0. This is one of the most unique looking helmets that I still own to this day. Some of the things that I like about this helmet, when I first put this helmet on, I just remember the field of view was just something that I haven't quite experienced. It's really wide. You can see just about everything. And again, it is a very unique looking helmet. And even to this day, I still haven't seen anything that quite looks like this helmet and with the designs and all that stuff. Since I do take a lot of photos on Instagram to get that wow factor on Instagram, I, I do use these helmets quite a bit. And also another thing that I like is this Fidlock system, this magnetic system. I do like the fact that I can also operate this Fidlock magnetic system, the chin strap with gloves on my hands. It makes it really convenient, makes it really quick and fast and easy. It is also a very lightweight helmet. Now that's where the positives end for me. The issues surrounding Rurock 1.0 and the 2.0 and also the 3.0 are well documented on YouTube. So I won't go too much into the details, but I'll just say that the quality control is just not what I expected at the price point of this helmet. The thing that drives me crazy on this helmet is the chin curtain will just never stay in place. Even when I'm riding, it'll just flap open. Also the padding just haven't really quite held its shape. I'm realizing now that this 
helmet, which fit really well in the beginning, is starting to come really loose. Also, the issue that's really hard for me to overlook on this helmet is just how loud it is. I literally cannot wear this helmet without earplugs. You know that old saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me? Here's my Rurok Atlas 2.0. Uh, I got the 2.0 hoping and believing that all the issues uh, were squared away from the previous generation, but here we are. Still the same issues, it's still a loud helmet, the chin curtain still comes out for me, even in the 2.0. A lot of the core issues that I had on the Rurok Atlas 1.0 were still present in the 2.0. I will say though that they've made some improvements in terms of you know, the visor being able to lock into place. The 1.0 didn't have that. The interchangeable visor mechanism, now it's just a little tab that you just twist take out the visor. Those are minor improvements to the helmet. I can definitely see some progress, but it wasn't quite enough for me to be really, really happy about the 2.0. I'm not sure if I can say that the Rock holds up in value when comparing it to you know, the other helmets that I have in this price range. Next one that I have for you is my DMD-75. This is the lightest helmet that I own coming in well under three pounds. This is my summer helmet of choice uh, because of all the airflow that just comes through the helmet. I like the fact that you can also find a wide variety of designs and there's actually a lot of versatility that comes with this just simple design. I can either wear this helmet as is or with goggles or with sunglasses. There's a lot of flexibility offered with just a very simple design. The only downside uh, that I can find on this helmet is that at high speeds, you get a little bit of a drag and a little bit of a lift on the helmet. But when I'm wearing this helmet, I usually do try to remember to keep it local and avoid the highways. Okay, let's move on to the Simpson Mod Bandit. <clears throat> so this is the only modular helmet that I own in my collection and it comes in at a price of $4.99. To me, that seems reasonable considering all the features and the quality of the Mod Bandit. So let's talk about a few things that stand out on this helmet for me. The solid feel when opening and closing the face of the helmet. Simpson provides metal chin bars. Not only does it feel secure when locked in place, you know that it's going to hold up over time. You can operate it with one hand using this little latch here. Very easy to use, very smooth operation. Really enjoy that. Super simple and easy to operate while you're riding and with gloves on your hand, with gloves in your hands, to be able to flip the helmet up when you need it to or when you're at a gas station and when you're on the go, that's very important. I also say that you get excellent, excellent ventilation with the two closable vents at the top. And all the vents here on the side, these little whiskers, those are also accessible from inside the helmet. And also I really like the fact that when you open up the face of this helmet, you can also lock it into place with this little latch here. So for me, I think this is just a well thought out helmet. A lot of the details have been carefully crafted with the rider in mind. What I also like about this helmet, the easy interchangeable visor system, you can change out the visor without having tools. You just lift up this little tab here, twist, take off the visor, repeat, and that's it. And that's just a very simple process. The only downside that I can mention about this helmet is just the sizing system is kind of off. I'm usually a size extra large, but on this helmet, I have to size down to a large. And even then when I wear this helmet, it just looks insanely large on me. And some of that is due to the modular design of this helmet. But again, when I'm riding with this helmet, I do tend to look like a bobblehead. And I forgot to mention the quality of the interior. Everything feels super solid. For $500, I would not think twice about getting this helmet if I were to lose it or in the event of a crash. Let's get on to the last helmet on this list. So this is my HJC RPHA 11 in a marble Venom design. I don't even have to say it. This is the loudest helmet that I own in terms of design. Just look at all the colors, the crazy teeth, the Spider-Man graphic on the back, marble up here. There's just a lot of things going on on this helmet. And typically I tend to go for a little bit more of an understated design, but for some reason this helmet just spoke to me. But other than the design of this helmet, this is actually a solid, solid helmet. It was actually really hard for me to find any downsides on this helmet. This helmet has the easiest visor changing system. If you open up the helmet, you just press down on this little tab here and then the visor pops out. You repeat the same process on the other side. You put the new visor in place. It just snaps into place super easy. The other nice thing about this helmet is that out of all the helmets that I own, I think this does the best job in terms of blocking out the wind. When I have all the vents closed, there's two vents up here near the eyes and there's a vent right here near the mouth. And with all of them closed, I can barely feel any wind coming into the helmet. Now, because of that, this is also the quietest helmet that I have. I can wear this helmet without earplugs and be perfectly fine on long rides. This is the helmet that I wear 99% of the time during the winter months. 
All right, so we just went through all of the helmets that I own currently in my collection. Now we're at the point of this video where I'm going to pick the helmet that I would rock with on a day-to-day -day basis. If I could only pick one, you might have guessed it, but it is a Simpson Mod Bandit. It just offers so much flexibility for long distance, for short distance, it can do it all. It's just quality all over the helmet. I can't find very much to complain about on this helmet for me. Now it was very close between this and the HJC for the same reason. The HJC is also just a really solid, solid helmet, but this this one edges out the HAC just because it's flexible. It is modular design. For me, the HAC is primarily just a winter riding helmet. The winner goes to Simpson Mod Bandit. Okay, with that done, we're gonna talk about the helmet that I regret. And this might be predictable, but whatever. It is the Rurok Atlas 1.0. For me, I really, really desperately want to love this helmet, but it's just hard for me to fully, fully support this helmet. Knowing all the shortcomings that this 1.0 has, and that it's also transferred to the 2.0, they just quite haven't figured it out. When people ask me about Rurok on Instagram, like, is, it, is this a good helmet? I just don't have the patience to type out everything. So I just say like, so I just kind of say like, it depends. If you like the look of this design, by all means it might be a decent helmet for you but for me you know when I'm comparing it in terms of price and features and, and quality with all the little helmets that I have I just can't justify the price on the Rurok Atlas helmets. My biggest problem with Rurok is that they've just treated these helmets like Kickstarter campaigns where my problem with Rurok is that they just treated their products like a Kickstarter campaigns. You pay for it and it takes months to get it. When you get it, it's never quite what you expected it to be. Again, this is just my experience, but I know that it's also shared by others. And so with that in mind, the Rurok Atlas 1.0 is the helmet that I regret purchasing. All right, guys, so thanks for sticking with me to the end of this video. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was informative and you learned something. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button, click that subscribe button, and until next time, I'll see you all later in the next video. Peace.